many people did yeah. uh, because of the the power of the church, and it was very unhealthy, uh, very bad for your health to uh, to question the existence of God. For example, uh, only much later Nietzsche declared God to be dead, but uh, there was no room for that in uh, in in the Middle Ages. Uh, basically gone. The existence of God was a given. Um, but uh, uh, at least since Socrates, there was this, um, uh, yeah, there was this, this, this search for the truth. So last week we looked at Socrates, uh, we looked at Plato, and today I want to continue and look at Aristotle. Aristotle was a, was a student of Plato, um, he was uh, uh, one of the, one of the big, the, the great, the, well, let's say the, the, the big three philosophers, and uh, he was the teacher of Alexander the Great. He was a tutor of Alexander the Great, um, and uh, so let's let's have a look at Aristotle. So this is basically I mean, uh, so rhetoric, um, the fact that the world is not purely logical uh, this was something that, that that Plato did not accept but uh, but Aristotle basically through observation by by, by looking at um, okay how people respond to debate to politicians is not only based on pure logical argumentation actually usually that's a, that's only a, a minor part of it um, there, there is the art of rhetoric, so how to grab somebody's attention, how to be favorable. So, uh, I mean, we can see that everywhere, like politi politicians in uh, like local politicians in, uh, in, in in Japan, they usually have good hair, and uh, or they are uh, attractive attractive people. Uh, you say superficial, superficial, or um, uh, somebody who who is being admired because. He, he was a great person, completely unrelated to his argumentation. So he was a famous soccer player or a famous athlete or a TV personality or something like that. Um, that is why people actually are persuaded by this person's argumentation, not by the contents, but but, but, but who this person is. Um, so uh, Aristotle recognizes this and says, okay, it doesn't logic by itself is not sufficient to actually win an argument. So if you want to win an argument, you need to actually focus on on people's motivations, what drives people, is their fears, their anxieties, uh, their pride, uh, their desire to have fun. Uh, basically, ev everything, uh, uh, that if you want to persuade people, you have to do more than just be logical. You have to... Uh, you don't have to be logical. You, well, of course. Like if if your argument is completely well, you don't have to be logical to be to actually to win an election or to, to to get people to vote for you. If you are lucky enough to be an attractive person or a a famous person or a, a, a admired athlete or, or something like that, you could actually win an argument. Something that's completely unrelated to the contents of your argumentation. So if you want to be a persuasive person, you have to you. you you cannot ignore the fact that you need to also uh, address these things. So you need to really directly address the people, and, and 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 not only stand on logic, but also acknowledge the fact that you need to tap into people's fears and to all these secondary things that drives people. People are not necessarily logical creatures. I remember I I drew this video before, and at that time Greece. They also discuss about uh, how to debate, mm. how to persuade people <coughs> is not only content, right. but also we much more important method how to persuade people, right? Vocal variety, body yeah. language. I remember, I remember. It's uh, it's absolutely that's that's very important. It's uh, they try to do scientific study um, about why people are persuaded by others. And it's found that, that, that only up to about 30% of persuasiveness is determined by the content of your argument. 70% is, is determined by other factors, like delivery. So how, how do you yeah, remember yeah. that? Not content. Right. 
It's amazing. 2,500 years ago, they did kind of sort of a remark. Right. This is today still. I go and visit Toastmasters every other every other week, and and we we. Practice. Oh, you have ever had a week? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, I actually I'm I'm currently I'm I'm one of the uh, uh, directors. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm. So that that's uh, yeah, but it's it's very important something that you cannot cannot ignore. So if you want to be influential, you also need to uh, recognize that. That who you're dealing with and, uh, and, uh, and and find the right voice and the right way to yeah, exactly whenever I go to make a presentation a speech and I need to prepare before before speech I need to prepare for I don't know a couple couple of days or three mm-hmm. days for preparation for not contest mm-hmm. for my attitude right emotional attitude Consider for my health, right. not take a cold, you know, sort of kind of, kind of things, mm. more care of that. Mm. So, so he actually was, if you look at, if you put all these things together, like the, the theory of happiness, about the, the being moderate between, uh, virtues between vices, and finding a good balance, theory about the arts um, and, and the role of the arts about friendship and uh, rhetoric and debates and he's, he was very much uh, very prolific and, and a lot of his theories are still standing today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. still very influential okay my my definition is democracy definition successful of democracy is uh, like uh, many people say, do you have an election? Mm. Do you have a free uh, press? Mm. Freedom of uh, expression? And I think so. This is uh, people living there. Are they happy or not? Mm. They're happy is, uh, is, uh, is the best way to evaluate mm. that country. So, but that, because I was wondering about this, so you have a series about. What, what was it? Democracy in uh, what? What are you cur- Which country are you currently uh, studying? Oh, Saudi Arabian democracy. There is no thing as no such thing as democracy in Saudi Arabia, but oh, that, that could be. No, no. But uh, Saudi Arabia is a very an aspect of democracy. Right. So measured against democracy. So no democracy. Ah, uh, okay. So basically, what you're doing is you're you're setting a standard for what is what a good democracy is, and then compare Saudi Arabia against those people men. living there. Are they happy? Saudi Arabia men may be happy, women not happy. Well, men who are uh, salafite. Uh, men is happy, right? But you need also need to be on the right side of the king and uh, and uh, uh, a Shia, not a Sunni. Uh, yeah, Sunni, yeah. Sunni Wafabi. Yeah. It's very strict religious people. Mm. No liquor, mm. very you know, clean life. Right. No nightclub. Right. So, so, but still, very strict law. But they're happy, but not women. And yeah, police people. officers are very happy because they all drive Lamborghinis. Yeah? Yeah, well, they're very happy. <laughs> still, these people are not there. Right. Still, but I don't know how long it will last because. No, 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 they, they don't. Mm. Their wealth is not sustained. Mm. Very long. Yeah. Not now. Yeah. Huh? Lots of money, but never, never, uh, never managed to grow out of this, uh, mm. uh, their, their roots. Yeah. So. Mm. so, Aristotle, I think, is a, is a, uh, is a philosopher that comes. Maybe closest to uh, uh, Confucius. Hmm. How to measure happiness? Right. How to how to live your life? But Confucius said that this is not the fundamental of happiness. Oh, different. Ma. But but but, but Confucius also said this golden mean is very effective for how to live. Okay. Mm. How to live. You don't get lots of money. You don't chase it for the position, right. fame, and so forth. He said, but they're almost contemporaries, right? 
uh, maybe Aristotle is a bit younger than uh, Confucius. はい、皆さんこんにちは。運のです。今日はですね。運の塾のあの研修のプログラムをご紹介したいと思います。で、まあこういう風なホームページあります。けれども、あの是非ですね。あの一度中身をご覧になっていただきたいと思います。あ、今日はブーキューブさんのスタジオに来て、まあこの収録をしておりますので、えー、中身はこういう風になってて、今最近ホットはね。グローバルリーダーの定義など書いております。で、特にあの県団連が作成しました。まあ、留学すればあの英語ができて専門性を持つというだけではですね、えー、グローバルリーダーにならないとここに書いてありますようにですね、えー、仕事ができる専門性を持つ英語ができるだけじゃなくてですね私どもの塾ではあリベラルアースということそれからあもう一つは孫子の兵をさらにはですね、えー、日本の歴史というものを合わせて教えることによって皆さんが海外の欧米の方々ともしくは華僑圏の方々と正々堂々と渡り合えるような人物を育成しようというふうなことを考えていますここにあの次のスライドが出ておりますけれどもここにあの書いてありますのですねさらに、えー、私どもの運の塾の中身につきましてはですね欧米の資料しか使っておりませんまたあ実際に運の塾は英語ではやっておりますので、まあ、英語の講師がこう話しておりますけど学習はですね、えー、日本の歴史をまだ教えてますので各週の午後はですね、えー、日本のプログラムをしております以前はこれ有料だったんで今はですね実際に会場費も取っていただいておりませんで、えー、毎回5000円ということで、えー、朝9時から午後5時までやっておりますので、えー、ぜひ皆さんですね、えー、ご検討の上あご参加いただければと、まあ、英語のできない方もですね、えー、各週の午後こういうふうな検証しておりますので、えー、ぜひご参加いただければというふうに思っておりますのでよろしくお願いします。でここにあのえー、さらにですねあのグループ討議とか実務の勘どころを教えるって書いてありますけど、まあ、実際には私があの10年ほどですね、えー、欧米の新聞とか雑誌等をです、ね、集めてきたもともと英語のベースでございますのでそうしたものをですね50セッションのテーマに分けて資料を作成しております、まあ、そういうことで、えー、世界のオペレーションもしくは関東リスクも含めてですねしかも世界のトップの方々に対してもいろいろな分析とか洞察をしてですね議論をしておりますそういったことも含めてですね今後ともよろしくお願いしたいと思います以上で私の挨拶を終えて終え,終えますが、まあ、今回のこのビデオの収録にあたってはですね V キブさんのスタジオをお借りしてですねお時間を頂戴してまあ、このビデオを作成させていただきましたよろしくお願いしますどうもありがとうございました